So good to see you all today. This is Pastor Donna Hankler with the Big Four PH Church in Kimball, West Virginia. Can you believe it's December? Christmas is here, and Jesus is the reason for the season. You know, I just want to take time to thank you all for how you supported us this year. Many of you all have been so faithful to get online and listen every single Sunday. Many of you all have even given... Uh, donations to, in, in the church, and, and many of y'all have just given so thumbs up and support, and you have allowed us to continue to teach the Word of God because of your faithfulness. And I want to tell you, don't get so busy in December that you're not studying God's Word and listening to the message of God's Word. What is more important than God's Word at this season? Take 20 minutes and be with us today and you will be blessed and invite a friend to be with us. The title of this message is, What Does God Want for Christmas? Well, what do you think? You know, you think about your Christmas list, all the things that you're going to get people, you, the gifts that you're going to give them, and, and what, what do I get my father, my mother, my son, my child, my co-worker, or whatever else. But have you ever thought, what does God want for Christmas? This is a good question, and we're going to talk about that today. So I want to remind you that you're with us on YouTube today, and your participation is vital to keep us on YouTube. If you will simply click the subscribe button, all that does is simply allow us to show participation, and there is no, you will not be paying any fees of any kind. If you will click the like button or give a positive comment, that will help show participation. Let's pray today, and we also have a giving link. Father, we thank you so much for those that are with us. And I ask the Spirit of God to anoint this message and to let the words of God minister to the hearts of people. I ask you, Father God, to give us ears to hear this message and hearts to receive this message and that people will, will stop and be still to read and, and understand God's Word in this season and that they will not miss the the meaning of this season. And we welcome your spirit and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we go. What does God want for Christmas? That is the question that I'm asking you. You know, I want you to think about this. What does God want for Christmas? You know, what does God want for Christmas? Well, you know, I think that he wants the same thing that he did the first Christmas. I think that this Christmas, in my opinion, what I've studied is I believe that God wants the same thing this Christmas as he did the first Christmas. You see, there was 400 years between the book of Malachi and Matthew. Very interesting time of study. And when that first Christmas came about, it was important. You can study about this. I've been, been studying some of these things, the 400 silent years, as they're known. And between the book of Malachi and Matthew, there's like 400 years, and they're called the silent years. It's reported that during these years that God didn't really speak during that time and that no scripture was written. And then suddenly the book of Matthew opens up. In Matthew 1, we're going to look at that. And you see heaven begin to intervene and begin to speak to people. And he's looking for people he can trust. The, after 400 years of silence, God wants this Christmas what he did the first Christmas. He wants people that he can trust. He needed people that he could trust people that he could trust with the birth of Jesus. For the birth of Jesus, he says in Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Father God needed people he could trust. He needed a, a woman named Mary that was a virgin, that the Holy Spirit would overshadow her and bear forth that child, Jesus. He needed a man named Joseph, and we're going to study about Joseph, that he could trust with his child. He needed people that that could, like the wise men and the angels, that would 
the shepherds that would carry the message of the birth of Jesus and that people would know and that they would proclaim that Jesus was born. I believe that what God wants this Christmas is trust. I believe he wants, he's looking for people that he can trust. And so we want to look at that. And, you know, trust is such an important thing to the Father because it tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. You've got to believe God. And just think about it. You want people to trust you. You want people to believe in you. Well, God wants you to trust him. It's so important to him. And I believe this very Christmas that that's what he's looking for, is people he could trust. And, you know, as I study this message, I begin to ask for confirmation about it and ask God to give me scriptures and messages that would confirm from his word that I'm on, on the right track. And one of the first things that he reminded me was about money. It tells us that in God we trust. Notice that we're not to trust the money, but we're to trust God. We are to trust God. Put your heart on trusting God and not on money. You see, in God we trust, it appeared on the penny in, since 1909. Then it was placed upon the dime in 1916. And also the words were placed on all the gold coins, silver dollars, half dollars, and quarter dollars since 1908. And as I began to study, I, I looked at the Hebrew calendar and began to study that and listen to people teaching about it because the Hebrew calendar is really the Jewish calendar. Is what we, that's kind of what the, the Jewish go by. And, and we, you know, Jesus was a Jew. Currently, we're in the month of Kislev. This is the ninth month of the Jewish calendar. And this is a month that runs, it's called Kislev 5783. It would be like November to us, but it's called Kislev, five, the year 5783, and it runs from 1124 to 1224. And the message is that even in this month, known as one of the darkest months, that trust God even during the darkest time. God will shine his light for you in this month. This month would be a good month for you. And trust is a word in due season, as Matthew Proverbs 15, 23 says. So trust is important to us today that we learn to trust God. And you know, I can't think of anybody that you could trust more than God. Let's look at one man that trusted him in Matthew 1, 18. We see now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. She was already having a child. And Joseph, her husband, you know, he did not understand this. He was not willing to make a public example of her because the in the eyes of the Jewish culture, Mary would be considered to have committed adultery. This was punishable by death. And he did not want that, for he loved her, so he thought he would put her away privately. But while that means he was going to divorce her. While he began to think about these things, what he should do, because he didn't know who the father of this child was at this time. He didn't know it was the Holy Spirit, but had, there was a son conceived there. While he thought on these things, an angel appeared to him in a dream. And the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he shall save the people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and they shall bring forth a son and call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took him, took him her, as, her, as his wife. He took her. He says he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Joseph had to trust God. And you know what? God was looking for someone he could trust. And he found that he could trust Joseph to be, to be the husband for Mary, to, be, to care for this child. 
He could trust, even, jo even though Joseph did not understand, he trusted God this first Christmas. And he played a vital role in this first Christmas. Well, let me ask you a question. You say, what does that have to do with me? Are you dealing with things that you can't understand at this moment, at this time? Struggling with things, trying to work them out on your own? Well, let's trust God. And let's see what God will do. For there is a scripture in Psalms 37 that says, Commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. Let's pray that scripture over your situation. So, trust. Will you give God the gift of trust this Christmas? As I began to study about trust, I thought about Jesus' ministry. He looked for people that He could trust. People, the first Christmas, throughout his ministry, he was looking for people he could trust. Can you trust God this Christmas? And let's look at Matthew 8, and we'll look at the woman that touched the hem of his garment. This is such an interesting scripture, for an encouraging scripture to, to many of us here. This woman certainly put her trust in, in God, because one scripture said that she had given all that she could to the physicians and she was not any better, as a matter of fact, words. So she finally realized she had to trust God. So let's look at Matthew 8, 5 through 13. Just a minute. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came to, oh, excuse me, I'm going to step ahead of myself. Uh, Matthew 9, 20. I'm going to jump a little bit. Okay. All right. Behold a woman, Matthew 9, 20, was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years and became, came in behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Now, I want you to think about this. woman had, had a bleeding issue, an issue with blood, a blood that was a difficult issue for 12 years. And other scriptures say that she had went to the doctor. She spent all she had, and she was worse. The doctor, it, her... Trust, it just, she, you know, it's okay to go to the doctor, but they just, did, and it's, we need to go to the doctor at times, but she just could not get the help she needed. And she said within herself, if I may but touch the garment, his garment, the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And notice she said that, that was, she was speaking to herself. She came in behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. And it says that virtue flowed from Jesus, one of the scriptures said, and that she was instantly healed, and that flow of blood stopped. I want you to see that she talked to herself. You can talk to yourself. She said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. Well, he is no respecter of persons. We have the legal rights to come to him and ask. Psalms 103 tells us that he sent his word and healed them. If you're suffering an affliction today, you have legal rights granted to you to come like this woman and trust him and ask him for the healing virtue of God to flow through you. You know, I often pray that God will give my doctors and nurses wisdom to help me and that my body will respond and will heal. I, I, she trusted Jesus and she was in a difficult situation. It says she was made whole that very same hour. Jesus found a woman that he could trust. And you know, he found another person that he could trust, and that's taking us back to Matthew 8, 5 through 13, looking um, for people that he could trust. I love this story about the centurion, and it talks about his faith. And this is such an awesome scripture, such an awesome passage. In Matthew 8, 5, when Jesus was entering into Capernaum, there came to him a centurion saying, Lord, my servant lies at home and is sick of policy and is grievously tormented with this illness. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not even worthy for you to come in my house. But you just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He said, I am a man under authority. And having soldiers under me, I say to this man, go, and he goes. To another, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. 
And when Jesus heard it, he was he marveled and said to them, Verily I say unto you, that I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. And I say to you that many shall come. So he, he's just talking about the faith of this servant. And he says in verse 13, his servant was healed that very hour that Jesus spoke. So I want you to get the picture. This man believed that Jesus would just speak the word, his servant would be healed. He didn't actually believe Jesus had to, he said, Jesus, you don't even have to come to my house. Just speak the word. You know, this is the word of God. And we can speak the word and pray the word over ourselves and our situations. What are you dealing with? His servant was sick and he was, he begged for Jesus to heal him. Do you have a sick loved one? Well, then you can take this scripture and speak the word over it. You can pray Psalms 107. He sent his word and healed them. Let's just go to that scripture just a minute. It keeps popping up. We can pray that God can heal. He has many ways he can heal. He uses doctors and nurses. He uses our faith. Our faith is important. Psalms 107.20 He sent his word and healed them and delivered them for their destructions. You can pray that scripture over your loved one. What situations that needs are you facing that God's word needs to be spoken over? Think about your situation. Is it financial? Is it physical? Is it a conflict? Probably you've been speaking over it. Maybe anxiety. Maybe complaining about it. Well, let's turn our words around and speak God's word and pray God's word over our situation and see what God's word will do. Can you trust God this Christmas in your situation? And you know, Matthew 24, 35 tells us about the word of God. And I want us to look at this scripture. We can trust the word of God. This is his word. It says it's a living word. We Let's see what he says about about his word in Matthew 24, 35. Jesus is telling us, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. God's word is here for you today. His word will remain forever. It says that his word is forever settled in heaven. You know, what is happening now is a lot of people are not that are, that are facing difficult situations and they're struggling in their situations, but they're not speaking enough of God's word and praying God's word over their situation. We've got to pray God's word over people in situations. And you know, I want us to look at, at Matthew 2, 1 through 7. There's another character at Christmas and he did not trust God at all. And as a matter of fact, we don't want to be like him. We want to be like these people that God tr that trusted Jesus. But let's look at Matthew 2, 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, you know, see, I think I've got his picture here, Herod the king. I'm sure you've heard much about Herod. And he was not one to trust Jesus. Behold, there came three wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. The wise man trusted. But when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem was with him. And when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not, are you not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of you shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Now did you get verse 3? When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. There were people rejoicing and being glad, the wise men, the angels, because of the birth of Jesus. But yet there was one that was troubled at Christmas. His name was Herod, and all of Jerusalem with him. You know, this Christmas, you have a choice to make. 
you can trust him and be in God's peace, or you can be troubled like King Herod. So I'm asking you this Christmas, what will it be? Will you trust God this Christmas, or will you be troubled like King Herod? So we'll go back to the very first thing. And the question that I asked you before is what does God want for Christmas? He wants us to trust him. He's looking for people to trust him. The very first Christmas he looked and he found people that trusted him. He found certain people, and we're going to study about those people in the next few weeks. And he wants today, this Christmas, people that will trust him. So let's trust God this Christmas. Let's give him the gift that he wants, which is trust. Let's not be like King Herod and not be troubled. Father God, I thank you today for each and every one that has listen to this message. I pray, God, that you give us ears to hear the message and hearts to receive. I pray, Father God, that your spirit would go forth and minister to people and let them know that you are the mighty deliverer, the mighty healer, the mighty God, and this is your word. And they can stand on your word. They can stand on your promises. They can pray your word. They can speak your word over their situations. Father God, I pray for those that are struggling this Christmas in many ways. And you said that light arises in the darkness. Let light shine for them and let them know that God is with them. And God, we pray for this Christmas that you will help us to trust you even more. Even as the song says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Well, we love you in the Lord.